Hello everybody, uh, so um, today's video is going to be about FreeCAD and um, the a interesting add-on workbench extension um, called the LC Interlocking Workbench. This video is kind of for uh, my good friend John Grimshaw who um, noticed some stuff that I was playing with um, and uh, asked me a couple of questions. So uh, hopefully it was of use for him and of use for others. So, what are these add-on things that I'm talking about? So, as we've discussed before in these videos, uh, FreeCAD has this thing where it uses lots of workbenches. And it's supplied with a big standard lump of workbenches that you can switch between uh, to do different jobs. But it's also got um, some add-ons, which are, again, everything in, in FreeCAD is amazingly contributed by community contributors. Um, and, but some things aren't sort of considered part of the core program, but they're good enough to kind of be uh, included as part of the add-on manager. So if you go to, um, from any point in FreeCAD, but I'm just on the start page because I've just booted it, if you go to the add-on manager and click it, um, you need an internet connection, and it will basically connect on these. This list here is all the sort of approved by the community um, add-ons for um, for FreeCAD. And so, uh, um, installing any of these will be um, like adding another workbench to your uh, to your FreeCAD environment. There's loads of them. I haven't played with them. There's lots about 3D printing. There's like, you know, that looks exciting. Airplane design workbench. That sounds like it's going to be complicated and a big distraction, but really cool. Things that I haven't played with. There's a Cura engine, because Cura is open source. I noticed there's also a Slicer um, engine. So for those of you into 3D printing, you can pretty much natively have those engines built into FreeCAD, etc. There's there's loads of them, and I, and I genuinely don't know much about any of them. But one that I've got installed is this one, and this is the one we're going to talk about today. So this is LC Interlocking. Um, so this is a FreeCAD module to create laser cut interlocking parts, with the caveat that it also might be useful for um, CNC work as well, CNC routing and stuff. So if you haven't got this installed, all you do is you'd come into this, so Tools, Add-ons, find LC Interlocking, and you would click Install. It wouldn't say Update for you if you didn't have it installed. And then it would install, uh, take a couple of minutes to download and install. Uh, you close this, you uh, have to restart FreeCAD, but it prompts you to do it. So you close your FreeCAD, reopen it, and then you should have the uh, LC Laser Cut Interlocking Workbench available for you uh, in your uh, FreeCAD instance. So yeah, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to very quickly draw a... Um, a simple collection of parts, like a little assembly, but made out of um, some parts. And then I'm going to show you how this laser cutting thing can be really useful. So it's got two uses as far as I see it. One is um, you might design something as a 3D model and you might suddenly want to lay it all out flat and export a 2D model. And um, particularly if it's made out of sort of solid flat kind of you know, plank surfaces type things. That that could be useful. Although there is the tech, if you want a tech drawing, that's a different video we're going to do because there's a tech drawing workbench built into FreeCAD that can convert 3D drawings into proper technical engineering drawings. So don't use this for that. Um, so you might want to you you might want to export um, a sort of a, a laid out sort of a disassembled uh, copy of your 3D uh, design. Um, so that you can CNC route it, or of course, so that you can laser cut it. So it's useful for that, but it's also, it has some built-in features for laser cutting, like um, automatic sort of tab generation that is incredibly useful. So if you've ever used like a box maker, um, then um, like a thing that would automatically generate a tabbed box for a laser cutter to cut, this can kind of do that, but it can do a lot more besides. So I'm going to just quickly make a part. I don't really know what the part is. I'm starting off in a sketch. I'm just kind of, uh, I tell you what, let's make it, I know what we'll make, something that's a bit sort of uh, uh, got some curves in it, just so that it, it doesn't just look like a box at the end of it. In fact, let's do like two panels separated out, like that sort of shape. I don't know. Okay, let's do... Let's do that as our basic sketch, and let's just go to the part workbench. 
part workbench park that's a bit weird and then i'm just going to sort of pad this out or extrude it um, i'm going to extrude it to 3.1 millimeters because a lot of the times when i'm laser cutting i'm using uh one eighth uh inch or 3.1 millimeter um plywood sheet okay so there's um an object okay so the first thing oh, my free card is doing a weird thing where it double extrudes things. I don't know what that is about. So here's here's an interesting thing. This the, later on when we use the LC interlocking workbench, it it doesn't play particularly well with things that have had lots of processes done on them, like pads and extrusions and da da da. So a way around this, and and also this is very useful for lots of things in FreeCAD, is to select the object on the part workbench, click part and go create a simple copy. Now you can see that. Um, basically if we spacebar that the extrude the original extrusion to just make it go uh, make it invisible um we're left with the copy that we've just created so that's that's this object um it's still got the same name but it, you can see that the icons changed and it's become a just a simple part so there's no sort of underlying geometry it's not even linked to the sketch in fact i'm going to delete that and delete the sketch and then we've just got that so now I, now i can't change about that but that's okay Okay, uh, I want two of those. I'm just making this up really as I go along. So let's just uh, copy and paste that. So we've got two of those. Let's just make the second one invisible for a minute. And we're going to sort of put these as two wings on the end of a, a plank, which I'm just going to make out of a cube. So again, I'm going to change one dimension of the cube to... Um, that isn't a cube when you change the dimensions. Uh, I changed it to uh, 3.1 millimeters thick in this face. Um, again, so it could be cut out of the same plywood or whatever. Make it 50 long. Uh, I, see, I, even though I have no idea what I'm des designing, in quote marks, it looked wrong at 50. It needed to be 60. I don't know why. Anyway, okay, so uh, we've got an exclusion. We've got a cube. Let's just move the cube. Do, do, do stick with me i promise you you will see the magic of this in a minute oh hang on oh, that's from that's that's from my sneaky practice go that i had with this so uh let's just move it roughly in the middle okay now here's an interesting trick if i want at the moment the base of this cube is like stuck into this uh, object the the original object if i want to move it up i can just set this to the width of that object that that sort of end plate thing which was 3.1 and then ooh, if i click it just one lump up it will uh, one step up it will be uh, sort of flush with that surface similarly what we're going to do now is i'm going to grab this extrusion i'm going to move it but i'm going to change this one to what was the length of that 60 mil plus the 3.1 so we've put six there and then just do one massive step with this Oosh. There you go. You don't have to make the noise. Oosh. That's me just being ridiculous. Okay, let's have that as our that's our thing. Yeah. So imagine we were going to laser cut this out of uh, a flat panel. We'd want two of the, of these end plates and one in the middle, but we might want them to connect with a tab coming out of this going into a hole in the end panel. So this is where the LC laser cut interlocking workbench is brilliant so if we uh, we come to the laser cut interlocking workbench just select all the pieces and then we're going to click this button here interlocking okay we get this dialog uh, coming up and we're going to click add parts so now it's just added the three parts of this uh, of this sort of assembly and like the uh, combo view we were in before if I press the select one of these and press the space bar, I can um, uh, toggle them on and off. So I'm just going to toggle those two off. So I've decided that we're going to have the tabs on, on this part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the part. No, I'm not. I'm going to select this face and I'm going to click add faces. Then you get a little thing called face six. So that's telling it that on this this face is is what we want to interlock with something that it's in contact with. So if you scroll down now, we've got some dialogue, which is the number of tabs. So we're only going to get it's not very big this object. So we're going to make it one, uh, uh, one one just one tab on here. Well, I suppose we could have two. Let's make two. Let's make two small tabs, and 
obviously we need to make them smaller it's only 20 millimeters across across in length so we'll we'll uh, make the tabs four millimeters for example a again this is not particularly how i do it there's these things here you see which are interesting where it will do um a, a dog bone dress up of the corners of the tab which is probably another video again but that's useful in terms of cnc routing where you want the router bit to uh, do a clever thing to um overcut in the corners to make sure that it doesn't leave a radius so that objects can slot together as a square but we're going to make this that we um that we are uh, uh doing this as, as a, a laser cut okay so we've done that side what i'm going to do is go to this side and i'm going to add this face and i'm going to do the same again so we said number of tabs two width of the tabs four i turned off the dog bowl hole what a strange word that is okay now let's click preview Ooh, look our part now has tabs in the end of this crossbar going through our wing sections so there we go so interestingly it's um it's opened up a new uh um uh, document so our actual original drawing is still here uh, and we can okay it there and it will appear there as this new object called multi-joy so the preview can be saved as a separate um, design um, it, it does mean that it can get a little bit confusing so what i tend to do is close the preview down with or without saving and, and just work in, in the main file it, it is actually a good way that you could separate having a, a tabbed version and a non-tabbed version of your um, project so uh, you might want to think about that. Okay, if we drop down on that, we can still see that we've got the original three parts underneath. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select all this. And this is really magic. So now we're going to click this button here, which is the export. Okay, so again, it pops up open a new document. And this has magically laid out the three parts and a projected uh, sort of path. Um, or shape view objects of each part um, in our new document okay so we've still got our original assembly here um, but now it's automatically kind of uh, chucked out this here so what we're going to do in this is so um, this is a really useful file to save but you also want to export this perhaps into something that your laser cutter or perhaps even like Inkscape could read for further manipulation you want to add a logo and that might be easier for you in Inkscape or whatever so what you can do again just like any other thing is you can make the 3d objects invisible and then we're gonna select the three um, 2d shapes and I'm gonna go up to uh, file and export now I have found uh, that the well the, the recommended export is flattened SVG and um, there is a standard SVG in here or like a sort of drawing uh, uh, output that lets you select between SVG and uh, this one drawing X SVG SVGZ and DXFs um, I can't get that to work um, but if I export as a flattened SVG um, so let's call this uh, test piece uh, 23 because I've got probably got a few things called test piece um, uh, this should just export as an SVG that we can open in Inkscape so if I flip over to Inkscape the file open uh, uh, messy desktop uh, what did we just call it <laughs> it's gone test piece uh, where's it gone don't. I don't know where I saved it to. Hang on. Let's just go back to free, free CAD. See, videos. I should plan them really. Export. Where did I save it to? Oh, I saved it to my home. Let's just chuck it in the in the desktop so that I know where it is. Test piece. The little there. Save. Uh, go back to here. File open. We're in the desktop. Uh, test piece. Da, da, da. There we go. So there we go. I think that's incredibly useful that we can uh, 
we can chuck SVGs out of objects that it's automatically kind of uh, flattened um, and then we can you know tweak them about I wouldn't want to waste that much material so we can move them about change the strokes uh, you know color objects to make them work with our laser cutters etc etc I think that's uh, a very very handy little function that we have uh, yeah, I think that's all. So, uh, as ever, thanks very much for watching. Do hit the subscribe button and feel free to buy me a coffee via my uh, Ko-Fi, coffee, Ko-Fi page. You never quite know how to say that. Uh, and until next time, take care. Ta-da!